Yeah, I mean, the true story is that a literary editor recommended, suggested that the, the Britain, that we needed a state of the nation novel about the crisis and recommended three novelists, one of whom was me. I was enormously flattered. But it also turned out that two of the others were dead, so I thought this was a message. And I really wanted to write, but I've done it before. I like, my novels tend to be fairly contemporary, most of them. And I think that, you know, there's a certain truth in novels that you don't get from current affairs and news. One of the things in a novel like this, unlike other novels, you do need to do some research. And I talked to bankers, and I talked to people I knew in banking, and also gradually it sort of built up and people offered me advice and help. Um, I mean, one of the most sort of telling things was I, there's a plot twist where the bank is trying to pad its assets for public view. And I asked somebody who deals in trust funds how that would work, and would they use their own money, this very rich banking family, or would they use their client's money? And he said, without doubt they would use their clients money and they could hide it for a year or two and that that was a revelation to me I don't say it's dishonesty but it seems to be pretty common that they're using our money you know for their own purposes and to to make themselves very rich and that was obviously where the title came from other people's money novels are not specifically designed to address or talk about particular problems I mean it, 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 a good novel it, you the reader draws their own conclusion from the characters and the plot, obviously. I don't think you can be preachy in a novel, but nonetheless, there are, it does talk about the human cost of the financial crisis. So, but it also contrasts what's happening in the city with what's happening in the real lives of people, particularly people in the creative business. Because it's, I believe, and I'm sure a lot of other people believe, that art and sort of artistic view of things is way more important than the financial. The financial should be a system but it shouldn't be elevated to the point where it's the most single most important thing in the world. And that seems to have happened. So that if you turn on the news now, you discover that, you know, it hasn't gone away. In fact, it appears to be getting worse as we speak. But that doesn't mean that people don't want to read or make music or do things. And that's also one of the themes of the book, comically in, at times, but that is one of the themes of the book. I mean, I hope that when you read this book, you will enjoy it primarily. You know, it's, it's quite a lot of fun. It's a lot lighter than some of my other novels. Um, and it's quite comic. But there are some serious themes. And one of them is the relationship between money and creative endeavor or art. And the other is really the state of the nation's morals and ethics. And by that, I'm not really taking sides. But I think it's undeniable that since the 1980s, there's been a kind of relaxing of standards and the city where they, city of London, where they have our money and they churn it round and round and did some very strange things within the past 10 years. Uh, that is the prime example. You know, they have bags and bags of other people's money and they take off it, not necessarily illegally, they take off uh, quite a substantial chunk but doing really very little. It's always amazed me. I cannot believe that there are millions of intelligent, or hundreds of thousands of intelligent people in the financial sector who deserve this kind of uh, huge amount of money. And I think that is one of the things that may well come out of this crisis, is that we realize the markets are not infallible. And we also probably have realized there has to be very tight control, however much they squeak.